Welcome friends, uh, in this video tutorial we will be looking at uh, the structure of uh, the RNA polymerase true and uh, we will be seeing the different part of this polymerase and we will look uh, the functionality of each of this part during the transcription process. Now we can see in this picture that uh, there are several regions like uh, th this, this molecule, this RNA polymerase 2 is really a complex molecule because it has to do all the job on its own because we have seen uh, the process of DNA replication in this DNA replication we have seen uh, the effectivity of DNA polymerase but that enzyme uh, does not uh, do uh, the enzyme uh, usually do not uh, does not uh, do the most of the job on its own but in case of RNA polymerase uh, it is uh, meant for doing all these things on its own so here we can see all the different parts uh, are assembled together to properly functional uh, to, to make a properly functional uh, enzyme that can synthesizes uh, RNA segment from the scratch. Now we can see here th if this is the structure of RNA polymerase in the side view we can find two different regions one is the C-terminal region which is denoted as CTD another one is called the N-terminal region denoted as NTD but except for this CTD and NTD which we can see here it is a part of the alpha unit or alpha subunit of this uh, this protein and rest of the part are made up with beta subunits so the protein is actually made up with alpha beta and uh, also sigma subunits so alpha subunit is placed here at this uh, at this position beta subunit is rest of the place which is having or carrying the site for catalytic ap activity and there is this uh, another site which is colored purple here which is called the sigma site or sigma subunit which is a very very important for recognizing the promoter sequence with which uh, this RNA polymerase is going to bound at the very first step uh, before beginning the transcription process. Now among this alpha subunit it carries two different regions one is a C terminal domain of alpha which is called alpha CTD another one is called the N terminal domain of alpha or alpha NTD now these two domains are connected together by a very thin uh, structure of amino acid sequences now alpha CTD is a very important part to attach or recognize the up element sequences in the DNA uh, in the other hand this alpha NTD part are, are different it is uh, the structural unit that can hold on to the beta subunit of this polymerase 2 protein okay now come come to uh, the beta subunit portion which is the rest of the part now beta subunit portion is very very important because it carries the catalytic activity domain so uh, the catalytic activity cleft is present or is placed in this beta subunit so it is having a cleft in the, that cleft it can uh, vigorously add nucleotide sequences to the growing chain of RNA and it can produce mRNA from a DNA sequence now the third and most important type of uh, uh, subunit we can find here which is the sigma subunit why I called it a very very important because the sigma subunit is a very important one uh, or it pretend to be the most important one at the beginning of the transcription process because the sigma subunit have to interact uh, it has to interact with uh, the promoter sequence region which is allotted in every DNA sequences uh, before or, or few nucleotides upstream of the transcription uh, starting sequence okay so here in this picture if you think this is the starting sequence of transcription then uh, 10 nucleotide upstream and 35 nucleotide upstream we can find two regions which are denoted as that uh, as one one as Tata box another one is TT Gaka so TA TA AT sequence and another one is TT uh, uh, GACA sequence so these sequence are very very specific for binding with this polymerase so polymerase cannot initiate the transcription from the beginning point of the trans uh, of the transcription of the DNA point unless it bind with uh, bind and recognizes the promoter sequence now the promoter sequence will be much more stronger if it have this if, if it is carrying the sequence uh, similar to TA, TA, T and T, T, G, A, C, A okay so uh, uh, not always uh, most of the promoter sequence are same but uh, they are uh, tends to be very very similar so as uh, uh, so so it, it depends on the type of similarity so as uh, 
so so the degree of similarity denotes the the strong uh, stronger affinity of this promoter with the sigma factor now if it has a stronger uh, prom uh, affinity towards the sigma factor that means the rna polymer is, is more likely to bind with those promoter and recognize those promoter and that means it is more likely those uh, genes which are just placed between those promoters which is which are to be synthesized uh, which are uh, not which are to be transcribed sorry okay so what we have seen here it is uh, this is the promoter region one is a minus 10 region another one is minus 35 minus uh, is denoting the upstream uh, upstream uh, facility of these promoters and there are upstream elements which is further nucleotide upstream of uh, this minus 35 now this upstream region can be determined or can be uh, recognized by alpha ctd region of this alpha uh, uh, subunit and it can recognize that and right after this recognition all these other sites uh, like the sigma factor sigma 2 and sigma 4 respectively uh, can recognize and bind with minus 10 and minus 35 promoter region sequences now the sigma 2 and sigma 4 binding with minus 10 and minus 35 promoter sequences triggers this DNA to in engage with the active site cleft of the beta subunit of this polymerase 2 and right after this attachment and formation of co uh, what is called the open complex the transcription of the DNA begins from the nucleotide 1 region which is denoted with plus 1 sequence okay so uh, this is uh, the very very basic structure of uh, of this RNA polymerase 2 now if we zoom in then we can find a very important structure now if we look at the zoomed view of this uh, structure of RNA polymerase 2 we can find several different regions now let me talk about these regions uh, in detail now there are mainly two different types of things we can see here one is the different types of clefts or different types of channels rather so the first thing is we have, we have talked about the subunits so it uh, what are left one is the channels and second thing is the type of sigma factors so uh, let's first talk about different channels so RNA polymerase is a single enzyme which is facilitating all the functions uh, from the binding of this polymerase protein to the DNA then unwrapping of the DNA then attaching nucleotides sequences to the DNA then polymerizing these nucleotide sequences and go along and then finally terminating this transcription process and take the RNA away from this DNA sequence so it is doing all the job on its own without uh, without having any assistance from other protein enzymes that we have seen in case of the DNA polymerase which is taking the help of other uh, accessory enzymes like ligase like uh, topoisomerase and all these different types of proteins topoisomerase is needed in this case too but uh, the job is totally different it is not directly related to this transcription process but uh, other than different types of uh, proteins that uh, DNA polymers have taken uh, RNA polymers do not need anymore because they can do this job on their own but for doing all these things they have to put all these small subunits together and uh, make sure that all the subunits are interacting together at a particular time but uh, for that purpose what it needs to do it need to produce a structure in such a way that through the structure RNA ca DNA can pass through as well as RNA can pass through the RNA which is which will be made and as well as the nucleotide sequence which are responsible for making this RNA which are very very important and very very uh, necessarily needed uh, during this transcription process must be entered for that it is having different types of clefts now there are two different similar type of clefts are called the upstream and downstream DNA channels now you can see in the downstream DNA channel uh, the DNA which is to be transcribed is entered into this uh, polymerase and in upstream DNA channel this DNA is uh, released so this is a small channel through which the DNA can pass on so RNA polymerase can hold on to a DNA like a uh, like a f uh, locker like a f like like a washer right so it fits onto the DNA and DNA is passing through the hole which is placed at the central region of this RNA polymers and the second uh, type of channel we can find is uh, the NT channel as we can see here and T channel so so we are having this uh, T channel is uh, the type of channel uh, at through which uh, those nucleotide sequences as we know uh, they can uh, they can pass uh, so so it no sorry T channel is called the template uh, channel and NT channel is called the non template channel now through the non template channel or NT channel the non template strand of DNA which is not to be uh, transcribed 
is passed so as you can see in this picture very clearly that this red and yellow color uh, strand is the non uh, uh, non template strand now it can pass through this non template channel but another uh, on the other hand uh, this t channel or trans template channel or template strand channel is the type of channel through which the template strand of the dna must pass now you can find here this is uh, this this uh, this blackish uh, green color uh, strand is the template strand for this DNA and it can pass through this T channel. Now what are template strand and what are non-template strand? Now template strand as the name suggests is a template for making the RNA from the DNA. So it is a uh, type of strand onto which we are adding nucleotide sequences so it is the complementary strand of our RNA and on the other hand we are having the non-template strand uh, non-template strand we are having here uh, so in this non-template strand it is it is not the strand onto which the nucleotide sequences are added it is just placed like this okay so non-template strand is placed like that okay so non-template strand and template strand uh, releasing sites are different so this is the second thing and third part is the uh, is the nucleotide entrance channel now nucleotides must be entered into this RNA polymers because these are the building blocks of the mRNA. So we have to take those nucleotide sequences. We need to attach one nucleotides after one nucleotide to produce uh, the nucleotide uh, polymerization and the polymer of nucleotide, which is the mRNA in that case. Now they must be entered on, into this uh, uh, RNA polymers act, active cleft or uh, catalytic activation cleft. Now they can pass through a different channel called the nucleotide active uh, nucleotide addition channel but uh, in this picture that is not shown but there is a channel like that. Now another channel is uh, the RNA exit channel. Now what is the importance of this channel because remember uh, we are adding those nucleotides together and we are making the RNA from the template strand of the DNA but right after the synthesis of RNA from the DNA the RNA must exit through some channel because it cannot exit uh, directly from the channel where the DNA is getting exit right so it must have its own channel and it is having the channel which is called RNA exit channel uh, in this region at the back side of this so whatever we are looking at is a very very simple illustration of uh, what uh, how the channels are uh, placed and we can also find a very important thing here that the sigma proteins this is the second uh, part of my discussion is the sigma proteins or sigma factors are aligned in uh, in the such a way that it is blocking or it is uh, just put it uh, outside the different channels as you can see here and this active cleft uh, we can find the sigma 2 which is very very responsible we have seen the sigma 2 the role of sigma 2 and sigma 4 uh, to to actually find the promoter sequences to recognize the promoter sequences the sigma 2 recognizes promoter sequences minus 10 which is having the sequence of TA, TA, AT and sigma 4 is denoting the sequence th minus 35 which is uh, having the sequence T T G A C A now uh, we can see another two different type of sigma uh, factors one is the sigma factor 1 another one is the sigma, sigma factor 3.1 now sigma factor 3.1 is attached to sigma factor 4 directly by the addition of a protein tail or protein linker and this protein linker which is just attaching sigma uh, factor 3.1 with sigma factor 4 is called the sigma factor 3.2 and we can find in all the, in this whole picture that all the sigma factors are linked with each other like sigma 4 is linked to sigma 3.1 via sigma 3.2 sigma 3.1 is linked to it, sigma 2 and sigma 2 is linked with sigma 1 and they are linked in such a way that they are carrying uh, the channel they are they are making this channel in uh, so much flexible for opening up the DNA sequences because uh, we first must open up the DNA sequences then we on, then only we can uh, mm, uh, have the fully accessible region of template strand and then only we can add nucleotide sequences one by another and finally we can elaborate or elongate uh, the strand uh, stretch of RNA, uh, RNA sequences okay so uh, so this is uh, the structure and we can find these are the beta beta subunits so this is the beta subunit both are the beta subunit this uh, this below uh, this bottom one is a beta and upper one is a beta dashed subunits and bottom subunit is much more uh, larger than this beta dashed uh, subunit okay so from this direction what is happening from this direction 
it is, it is moving at, at this direction so it is upstream of the DNA this is downstream of the DNA through this upstream of the DNA uh, the DNA is getting entered and from the downstream the DNA is getting synthesized so DNA is getting synthesized in this direction so this is the direction of the DNA synthesis uh, uh, sorry RNA synthesis and RNA is moving on the opposite direction to exit through the RNA exit channel okay so this is uh, in, a, in, a, in a sense uh, the whole uh, picture of RNA polymerase 2 and how different sigma factors are arranged and how it is doing its job now the most important thing is that, that when the DNA enters to this RNA uh, site uh, this RNA site the sigma factor 2 and sigma factor 4 recognizes the promoter and they will bind with it and they will make the binding of RNA and DNA stronger then uh, there is a shift of confirmation of uh, both RNA as well as uh, uh, RNA polymers as well as the DNA sequences that will melt down some of the bases and can open up the DNA complex and this complex uh, this open up complex is called the open complex of DNA now this open complex of DNA can be easily accessible uh, for different nucleotide sequences to come in and attached uh, one after another to make uh, a long RNA chain. Now this long RNA chain can easily exit from this RNA exit channel and that's how uh, the RNA can be made. Okay, So this is uh, all about RNA polymerase 2 and I hope it will help you. Thank you.